Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Sin Stuff. Today we're going to be talking about music and how it can help your brain with aging and dementia, specifically playing the keyboard. Coming up next. This is gonna be a little bit of a different video simply because we're not gonna be talking about specific synthesizers, but we're gonna be talking about music and keyboarding and, and how it affects you in your life going forward and in old age. It's something I find particularly interesting being that I have a fair amount of exposure to people around me and in my family suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, I've actually recently lost two within the last year uh, close family members to dementia. So it's definitely something that's uh, part of my life. I subscribe to a number of medical journals simply because I find them interesting to read. And this is an article I came across probably about three or four months ago. And I wrote it down as I thought, you know, this is something that would make a good video for my synth channel. This article was about a study or project in the UK called Protect. And it's a study that is specifically targeted to examine aging when it comes to dementia and Alzheimer's in the, the general population. And we're talking about healthy aging. We're talking about high functioning when it comes to physical, mental health, and cognitive performance. So there was about four minutes of video in here where I talked about the individual studies and all the statistics and, and got into all the numbers and everything. And I showed this video to my wife and she's like, I'm bored already. Nobody's going to watch this. So I cut all this out because nobody's going to watch it. So if you want the details showing the numbers and actually how the studies were performed, those links are in the description below. Now let's just get to what the studies actually showed. So the, the basic conclusion was that learning to play a musical instrument is a cognitively stimulating activity. No news there. And it can increase resilience against age-related pathologies later in life. So the more music study playing, the more involvement with music that you have throughout your life, the more stimulation you, you get in your brain, the more cognitive stimulation, the better equipped you are to fend off age-related cognitive decline later in life, such as dementia or old Alzheimer's. What did we learn from this study? And again, if you want details on the study, I'll put a link to it in the descri description below. So those who reported playing a musical instrument performed significantly better on working memory and executive memory tasks. So again, your memory works, your decision-making, your day-to-day your -day functioning, your executive level, as well as your short-term and long-term memory, there is a significant improvement if you have music in your background. The more music and the earlier you started the music, the more significant the increase. But they found that even people that start music later in life and even in midlife still see a significant benefit in later life in terms of cognitive function. In terms of working memory, the musicians that had the best improvement in working memory are keyboardists. So using the keyboard apparently you use a lot more of your short-term and long-term memory in order to be able to continue to function and play it. So that exercises your memory and as a result, your memory improves, especially and you get what's called a cognitive reserve. It's kind of like working a muscle. You use it or you lose it. And if you are constantly at the gym working out and you develop these great big muscles, well, you're not using those muscles in everyday life, but if you have to, you've got that reserve. And then in your elderly years, when you do lose muscle mass, well, if you had more to begin with, then you have more left over when you start losing it. Same thing with your brain. If, if you're using your brain continually and generating more connections and, and improving it in midlife or early life, that means you have that much more that when you start losing function in later years, you still have a significant amount left. If all you do is sit around watching TikTok all day and you're not generating those, those neuron connections, you don't have an excess of cognitive capacity. And so you are far more likely to be affected if you are suffering from a cognitive decline or dementia or Alzheimer's of that sort, because you don't have that reserve, that cognitive reserve. We talked about working memory for keyboardists. What about executive function. You would think executive function is probably going to be keyboardist too, but no, you're wrong. Executive function was most heightened on woodwind players and singers. 
I guess maybe because there's lyrics involved, there's there's language, but those those are the two types of musicians that had the best cognitive uh, executive function. The following are direct quotes from this study that I will put a link to in the in the description below. And I'm going to read these to make sure I get them exactly right. So there is considerable evidence for the benefit of music group activities for individuals with dementia. That was actually part of this study because they they distinguish between independent musicians who may be playing in a studio or on their own and those who played with groups or sang in choirs. So the, the group dynamics actually has a significant increase. So you actually do far better playing with a band than you do sitting in a studio in your basement by yourself playing music. And if individuals have dementia already, there is a significant benefit from treating those individuals as a group and having them play music together, it even at that late stage, they're seeing benefits. The approach of having music group activities for individuals with dementia, this approach could be extended as a part of a health aging package for healthy older adults to enable them to proactively reduce their risk and promote brain health. So basically, if you are getting up in age, play music, play an instrument, learn, learn an instrument, sing, join a choir. It will do you so much better. If you're not that age yet, get your parents involved, get them learning music, it will help. Lifestyle factors that keep the brain active appear to increase cognitive reserve and are associated with more favorable cognitive trajectory. Cognitive trajectory, I mean, we all decline in older age, the cognition goes down, but like I said, if you have more of a reserve to begin with, that trajectory may be going down, but you have a big buffer of cognition in your brain, the capacity for cognition, and that means that it's going to affect you a lot less than the TikTok watcher. Another direct quote. The value of education and engagement in musical activities throughout life, my emphasis, as a means of harnessing cognitive reserve as a part of protective lifestyle for brain health, even when practiced later in life. So yes, there is a benefit starting when you're a kid and that benefit persists through your entire life, but there's also considerable benefit to starting later in life. So it's never too late to start. People who had engaged more with leisure activities such as music were less likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. Now, Alzheimer's is a specific disease that has a number of causes, environmental, genetic, but you can help protect against Alzheimer's simply by engaging in things that keep your brain active. Again, use it or lose it. Musical practice has been associated with healthy neurocognitive aging, increased memory, executive function, emotion, and language. So not just cognitive function, but all the areas of the brain. Emotion, your emotion center, your language center, all the different areas of your brain benefit from practicing music. The more you practice, the more you're strengthening your brain. And the last quote from this study, children consistently show improvements in concentration, reading, processing speed, and total IQ, even in children from low socioeconomic backgrounds, which typically have a lower total IQ. And those benefits persist into adulthood. And it goes on to say that children that are engaged in music early in life are statistically higher represented in secondary education regardless of their socioeconomic background. So even kids from the projects who are do not have the benefit of good schooling or perhaps uh, good food or, or stable background, those who engage in music are significantly better chance at succeeding later in life, getting secondary education, and, and becoming a, a high productive member of society. That early education in music persists throughout their entire lifespan, and it makes such a huge difference. So get your kids into music. If your schools don't offer a music program, and so many of them don't anymore, get them learning, get piano lessons, violin lessons, doesn't matter. Get them in the choir, get them learning music. It will do them so much good for the rest of their lives. And the last thing I wanted to note didn't come from this study at all. It's my own personal experience in that I have seen music do 
incredible things for people suffering from dementia. My wife is a singer. A lot of what she does is performing in nursing homes. She will go into nursing homes, and a lot of those nursing homes are memory care units, which is what they call where they have people who have dementia and Alzheimer's who may not recognize their own spouse or their own children. I often go in with her, and I will see these people that live in these centers, and they think I'm their husband or I'm their son. <laughs> More than once, one of them's tried to drag me off to the room because they thought I was their husband. <laughs> but these people may not know where they are, they may not know who they are, but music still speaks to them. I have seen this multiple times where one of these people will be in the room and they almost look dead. I mean, they're like, they're, they're totally not present. Or they are confused and angry because they don't know where they are, they don't understand what's happening to them, they don't know their own family members. My wife will get up there and sing music from their childhood. The ones that look like they're dead come to life. They will start singing along with every word. You know, they'll start telling you about, here's what I was doing. I was, I was at the USO and I was dancing with all the soldiers. I've heard that more than once. And, you know, this was our favorite song. And music is so connected to memory that it just, these memories that are still there somewhere, the music brings it out of them and it brings them back to life. It helps center them and, and, and calm them and, and give them a sense of familiarity. And it's such a beautiful thing to see. And lastly, the effects of playing music or singing, even if you're just singing along to the radio, my wife always tries to get the people in the residences to sing along because it generates oxytocin. It generates all the, the happy hormones that make you feel good. It reinforces your immune system. It's a natural antidepressant. It's good for you. So all good reasons to play music, sing music, be involved with music your entire life. It will do you good. It will do those around you good. Get your parents start into music if they're not already. If, they, if your dad played guitar 20 years ago, buy him a guitar, get him start playing again. If your kids are in school, get them in outside lessons, get them involved in music, join the choir, join the band, whatever it takes, get music into the lives of the people you love and continue playing music yourself. Keep learning, never stop learning, keep generating all those connections in your brain, build that cognitive reservoir, do yourself good. If you like this video, this type of video, I know it's kind of different for me, but if you do find this interesting, please click like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. If you have any comments, suggestions, corrections, anything you want to add to this, please do it in the comment section below. And as I said, I will be putting links to all these studies in the comment section below if you're interested in reading more and doing some research, which will benefit your brain. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.